We're back now at 8.39 with today's countdown to the prom. It's a big event in the life of any teenager, but it's much more than dresses and tuxedos. It's also a night where things can and sometimes do turn dangerous. NBC's Lilia Luciano is in Miami with more on what parents and teens need to know. Lilia, good morning. Good morning to you, Matt. And it is a rite of passage for so many teens. But before getting too excited about dates and dresses, there are some dangers parents need to be aware of before the big prom night. It's a night to remember. A night of limos and gowns. Come on now, Dance-offs and sometimes heartbreak. My date's a flute-toting band or... Prom night, a night of big hopes and dreams. But it's also a night where things go wrong. Studies show 70% of juniors and seniors expect their friends will drink and often drive. I'm so sorry. And I hope that you can find me a heart someday to forgive me. Jonathan Caruso never imagined he would be standing in a courtroom asking for forgiveness. Prosecutors say the teenager drank 10 beers after leaving a school-sponsored after-prom party. That's when he fell asleep at the wheel and struck a mother and daughter walking their dog. 67-year-old Carol Marion died on the scene. Her 43-year-old daughter Charlotte survived with severe injuries. She meant the world to me and it was a very big part of my life. You've got to take him out of it. Caruso's family and friends were convinced he was not the type to drink and drive. He's probably one of the sweetest kids and he, didn't, he doesn't deserve this. But experts say that's exactly where the problem lies. Too many parents are in the dark about the pressure to drink and drive, especially on a night like the prom. One out of five teens binge drinks, but what's even scarier is only one out of 100 parents thinks their kid binge drinks. So we've got a big disconnect here. So what problems do you normally see during prom season? Is there an increase in alcohol-related crashes? Oh, without a doubt. During the season, uh, we see a huge spike in it because kids are going out, students are going out to celebrate, and it's great. It should be the best night of their lives, not the last night of their lives. It was the last night for 19-year-old Andrew Dean Lipson after riding in the passenger seat of his best friend's car following a post-prom party. Unfortunately, his friend had been drinking. Nothing is worth losing a friend and ruining yours and others' lives. Zephyr Dresserpeck is serving up to four years in prison for vehicular manslaughter and driving under the influence. Today, he's speaking out on awareness campaigns in an effort to reach high school students before it's too late. You never think it will happen to you, but trust me. It can. High schools around the country are also taking action. In Miami Beach, seniors are shown a dramatic simulated car crash days before prom. The reality of it is just it just made you think about what if you're really in that position. A dose of reality is just what experts hope students will remember. We need to equip our teens with things they can use in real life situations so that they can get out of it and get themselves home safely. That's the most important thing. And here in Hollywood Hills High, students signed a promise on prom night last weekend not to drink and drive. And parents were mailed flyers with tips to help them talk to their teens in advance. And Matt, everyone made it home safely. Now that's good news. Lilia Luciano in Hollywood, Florida this morning. Thanks very much. So how can you help your teens celebrate a night they'll never forget and keep it safe? Ann Choquette is the editor-in-chief of Seventeen Magazine. Clinical psychologist Belisa Vranich is a contributor to Shape Magazine. Ladies, good morning to Hi, both of you. Good morning. I'm going to get right to this survey that Seventeen conducted. They asked kids, did they think that drinking and driving was a problem on prime night? 1,100 or so said no, drinking's not a problem. 379 said yes. That, those numbers alone worry me. Well, there's good news and bad news in that. The good news is most teens, most, just want to have fun on prom. It's a night to cut loose and to celebrate, you know, have a final bonding night with their friends. But that one in three, right, is a problem drinker. It's a problem for everyone, and the results are disastrous. We talk about this, Belisa, as being a rite of patch passage, and I think that puts too much pressure on the night. The kids think this must be a night where we do things we will remember for the rest of our lives, and oftentimes that leads to reckless behavior. Exactly, and with your teen, what you have to remember is if you're hearing them say it has to be the best night, the craziest night, the perfect night, that's when you need to sit them down and really talk about their expectations. Do we think schools are doing enough? We've just talked about these 
accidents that some are staging to kind of shock kids before the prom. What more should they be doing? Schools have had to get really creative. They've parked car wrecks in front of the school and posted signs about drinking and driving. Um, I love this one school that did a lockdown. They, um, the prom was locked down from 11 till 5 a.m., so there was no drinking and there was no driving, and they made it fun for the kids at, while they were there. After parties, that seems where a lot of the problems, if they happen on, at a private location, that can get out of hand. A lot of schools and communities are trying to throw after parties so they can keep an eye on kids. You like that idea? I like that idea because after parties are trouble. They really are the time when bad things happen, and if you're letting your kids go to that, that's when you really have to be alert. Well, Let's talk about parents, okay? A lot of times parents will say, I don't want my kids drinking and driving, so I'm going to hire a limo. They think that's a great solution, but what you could be doing is giving your kids a party on wheels. Well, you really have the recession to thank for what's happening with, the, with after proms these days, that it's all about doing it yourself. And so parents really can get involved. Rather than hire a limo, we had great stories of dads who put on a chauffeur cap and put soda and candy in the back of the car, and they were the limo driver. Yeah, but the problem is if, you, if your parents drive you, immediately the kid is worried he will be seen or she will be seen as uncool. Starting to learn about designated driver, I think, is that this, the prom is a good time to start learning about the temptations and things that will be out there for you after the prom, once you graduate, once you go to college, the military, whatever. So this is a good time to start learning designated driver, drink in moderation if you do, um, really knowing limits and dangers. A couple of red flags that should go up. Okay, a child comes to you right before the prom and says, hey, this is going to go late, so I'm going to be staying over at a friend's house. Parents should beware. Bring the kids back to your place and make sure that you are a part of the fun so that you are the cool mom or the cool dad rather than feeling like a chaperone. Hey, mom or dad, I want a place to go after the prom. Can I get a hotel room? Uh, no. <laughs> Simple <laughs> answer. Conversation. Okay. <laughs> Tips you have. Don't underestimate the influence that you as a parent have on your exactly. own teenagers. Exactly. Make sure your teenager sees your face very serious before they leave. I care about you. Be responsible. Talk to them also as adults, not teenagers. Absolutely. They are adults. A lot of these kids are turning 18, and they need to hear the words responsible, safety, uh, responsibility, and your Consequences. rights. Consequences. Yeah. They need to hear big words that have to do with grown-ups. Well, Lisa and Ann, thanks very much. Thank, Important thank you. information for parents right now at this time of year especially.